Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's me, R Squad 911. I'm back. Um, so, a little funny story is I was doing a whole bunch of unboxing videos last night till about 3 a.m. I did five unboxing videos, and uh, when I was doing this one in particular, I was so tired I forgot to turn on the mics. So it was uh, a muted statue unboxing review and assembly. <laughs> So anyways, which is, it, it works out because what happened was when I was unboxing this, uh, I noticed that the collector I purchased it from, he forgot to put in the alternate head sculpt. Um, but he did ship it overnight express to me and I got it just now. So I figured I'm gonna do the statue unboxing properly with actual sound. <laughs> so uh, what we have here is one of my ultimate grail pieces. This is the Star Wars Mythos. Uh, Lomrock uh, Jabba's Gamorrean Executioner. Um, he's rare. I think there's only there there is only 750 of these made worldwide, uh, which is kind of crazy because uh, Boba Fett, um, Darth Vader, Obi Wan they had thousands made. Um, so if people wanted to complete their full sets, I mean they had to really scramble to get this one um, to complete the the old Mythos line set back then. So it was Maul, Vader, Boba Fett, Obi-Wan, and the Gamorrean, Gar, uh, Gamorrean Executioner. Uh, so which was really strange um, because they've always sold out on all the rest of them. I think uh, Boba Fett was 2,000, Vader was 4,000. Um, those are all sold out. So people who wanted the full set, they really had to get this one pre-ordered right away. Um, and that's why I think uh, in the secondary market, this thing has gone up so much in value. It's because those guys or new collectors who are trying to get the complete sets are hard pressed to find this guy. Um, so I'm super lucky that I found him. All I need now is Obi-Wan. I started collecting eight years too late uh, before these guys came out. Um, I mean, way after these guys came out. So I couldn't, uh, I would have definitely pre-ordered these all. Uh, all together, uh, one by one as they came out. And I believe this one was the last one out of the whole series of the old, the first series uh, to come out. Um, which is crazy because when these first came out, they're only around 300 to $400 um, from Sideshow. And on the secondary market, these things are going for thousands, uh, which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah, but so without further ado, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the box. Um, right here is the front. Uh, Lumrock Jabba's Gamorrean Executioner statue. Uh, on the side here, I believe that is Jabba's eye. Um, yesterday when I was doing the unboxing video, I said that it was uh, the, the Rancor's uh, eye, but it wasn't. Um, it's Jabba's eye here. And then oh, on this side is what the statue will look like. And on this side, this is the guy that uh, I forgot his name that uh, Lumrock is executing. So basically the story was that uh, this guy somehow pissed off Jabba and, uh, and he's also notorious as well. Um, not to be trifled with, but it's Jabba. Jabba's uh, the king gangster, I guess. Uh, he was thrown into the pit. And instead of being met with a rancor, he was met with Lomrock. And Lomrock basically lopped his head off with his ginormous axe. Um, I don't know when the rancor starts to come into play. I guess, uh, I'm not sure if that's what they're showing uh, in uh, the Bad Batch right now. Um, there was a little baby rancor, not even sure. I'm not even gonna speculate. Uh, maybe you guys know, comment below, let me know if I'm completely out of my mind or completely wrong. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, which I've already said, I'm going to uh, unbox this bad boy. Um, oh wait, first I have, uh, this is the, the uh, art print and the certificate of authenticity all in one. There, we're about to find out what that guy's name is. Let's see if we can open this up properly. Oh, there. 
So with these art prints, I'm not a big fan of like the, the three kind of like the storyboard sort of look. I like um, the single one, like single picture of just the executioner would have been nice. Uh, but that guy's name is the life of Longo Two Guns. Uh, no, what's his name? His name... Longo. Oh, I guess it is Longo. Longo Two Guns. Um, we're gonna have to look him up on um, Star Wars canon or just find out information about it because I know nothing about him and I'm not gonna attempt to pretend that I know. <laughs> All I know is that he pissed off Jabba, he got thrown into the pit and uh, Lomrock here took him out. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the styrofoam uh, box out of the art box. I'm gonna lay it down and show you guys what's inside the content. So stay tuned. Hey guys, we are back. I took out the styrofoam box. Everything's nicely packed. Um, again, <laughs> so let's see. Let's start off with the base here. All right, very typical of um, this whole Mythos line. They all had the round base. All the new ones have more organic, like uh, more uh, designed bases. Uh, here we see like the rock, it could be the, the floor of the pit inside Jabba's uh, fortress. Uh, this one is a very low edition size, uh, edition number. It's number 12 of 750. Not that that matters, but now that I actually have a low numbered one, it matters to me. <laughs> All right, so we will put this back in here, out the bag. Uh, next, we will unbag his giant axe. Very nice detail. Really looks actually like worn metal. Uh, that's the peg there. And this is the skull. Looks like, I don't know what this is. I was gonna say a tauntaun or a, um, no, not a, definitely not tauntaun. Like they're in the desert. What would a tauntaun be doing over there? I'm not even sure what kind of creature this is. But that is the skull and the axle peg into there. Really nice detail. I mean, they even did detail inside here where this is gonna be sitting on the ground. So. Uh, Good on them. All right, here is Lomrock's body. Oh my gosh, he's a beast. Oh, he is heavy. Um, I was surprised yesterday when I did this unboxing and I'll just relay what I thought of him just by pulling him out of the box. I thought like, wow, he is massive. He's huge, he is heavy. Um, he is a lot more substantial than all of the other guys in the Mythos line and girls, uh, Ventress. Um, but for then, he, and to today's standards, he's huge. I mean, this is like almost like a one quarter scale. Uh, this is not one fifth. So, um, I mean, it is one fifth, <laughs> but uh, he must have been huge, massive in real life. Uh, the detail is really nice. Um, I love the sculpted clothing, the gauntlets, everything. Um, you guys know I hate um, mixed media. So this is really amazing. Um, I'm always worried that mixed media, like, I don't know, like the, the fabric will deteriorate over time or it just collects more dust. Um, and you gotta like uh, sculpt, like mold everything into the position that you want. I just like it like an actual sculpture art piece. So. This guy's crazy. Like you can see the scarring here. See the scarring on his arm right there. Oop. And uh, he has uh, a little tag here, but we'll do some more close-ups once I assemble this guy. So I'm gonna put him back right here. And then next we have the head sculpts. This is the original head sculpt here. Look at that detail, oh my goodness. Even like a, 
the, I don't know, like the moist look there on his snout and on his upper lip. The detail, the eyes. Oh man. I mean, this, this blows me away. Like I, I wish Sideshow would still produce stuff of this caliber, this quality. Like this doesn't even look like um, it's, it came from Sideshow. Maybe somebody like XM or Queen Studios or Infinity Studios. This is just bananas. Okay, that's that. And then this arrived today, the alternate headpiece, which is freaking amazing. <sighs> Look at those teeth, the tongue, the tusks, the horns on his head. Everything about this screams quality. No wonder that this is considered the best out of the line. Um, even, uh, up against Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, I am completely blown away. He looks fantastic. I wish I'm um, actually looking at this, they would make it more of a wet look inside his mouth, inside his mouth, because you know, it's inside his mouth. Um, it doesn't look like they put any of the, the wet look on his snout on this one. I'll put them side by side so you guys can see. But uh, I'm probably going to display him with the mouth open. Just has a lot more character. Uh, comment below and let me know which one that you guys like. Kind of, the stoic look is pretty cool too. Um, but we'll see. Once we have it all assembled, then I'll change out the head sculpts and we'll see it all as a complete um, statue. All right. So that is that. I'm going to set up the camera back again. And uh, we will start assembling this guy. All right, so be right back. Hey guys, we are back. I took out the styrofoam box. Everything's nicely packed. Um, again, <laughs> so let's see. Let's start off with the base here. All right, very typical of um, this whole Mythos line. They all had the round base. All the new ones have more organic, like uh, more uh, designed bases. Uh, here we see like the rock, it could be the, the floor of the pit inside Jabba's uh, fortress. Uh, this one is a very low edition size, uh, edition number. It's number 12 of 750. Not that that matters, but now that I actually have a low numbered one, it matters to me. <laughs> All right, so we will put this back in here, out the bag. Uh, next, we will unbag his giant axe. Very nice detail. Really looks actually like worn metal. Uh, that's the peg there. And this is the skull. Looks like, I don't know what this is. I was going to say a Tauntaun or a, um, no, not a, definitely not Tauntaun. Like they're in the desert. What would a Tauntaun be doing over there? I'm not even sure what kind of creature this is. But that is the skull and the axle peg into there. Really nice detail. I mean, they even did detail inside here where this is going to be sitting on the ground. So, uh, Good on them. All right, here is Lomrock's body. Oh my gosh, he's a beast. Oh, he is heavy. Um, I was surprised yesterday when I did this unboxing and I'll just relay what I thought of him just by pulling him out of the box. I thought like, wow, he is massive. He's huge, he is heavy. Um, he is a lot more substantial than all of the other guys in the Mythos line and girls, uh, Ventress. Um, but for then, he, and to today's standards, he's huge. I mean, this is like almost like a one quarter scale. Uh, this is not one fifth. So, um, I mean, it is one fifth. <laughs> 
but uh, he must have been huge, massive in real life. Uh, the detail is really nice. Um, I love the sculpted clothing, the gauntlets, everything. Um, you guys know I hate um, mixed media. So this is really amazing. Um, I'm always worried that mixed media, like, I don't know, like the, the fabric will deteriorate over time or it just collects more dust. Um, and you gotta like uh, sculpt, like mold everything into the position that you want. I just like it like an actual sculpture art piece. So this guy's crazy. Like you can see the scarring here, see the scarring on his arm right there. And uh, he has uh, a little tag here, but we'll do some more close-ups once I assemble this guy. So I'm gonna put him back right here. And then next we have the head sculpts. This is the original head sculpt here. Look at that detail, oh my goodness. Even like a, the, I don't know, like the moist look there on his snout and on his upper lip. The detail, the eyes. Oh man. I mean, this, this blows me away. Like I, I wish Sideshow would still produce stuff of this caliber, this quality. Like this doesn't even look like um, it's, it came from Sideshow. Maybe somebody like XM or Queen Studios or Infinity Studios. This is just bananas. Okay, that's that. And then this arrived today, the alternate headpiece, which is freaking amazing. <sighs> Look at those teeth, the tongue, the tusks, the horns on his head. Everything about this screams quality. No wonder that this is considered the best out of the line. Um, even, uh, up against Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, I am completely blown away. He looks fantastic. I wish um, actually looking at this, they would make it more of a wet look inside his mouth, inside his mouth, because you know, it's inside his mouth. Um, it doesn't look like they put any of the, the wet look on his snout on this one. I'll put them side by side so you guys can see but uh, I'm probably going to display him with the mouth open. Just has a lot more character. Uh, comment below and let me know which one that you guys like. Kind of, the stoic look is pretty cool too. Um, but we'll see. Once we have it all assembled, then I'll change out the head sculpts and we'll see it all as a complete um, statue. All right. So that is that. I'm going to set up the camera back again. And uh, we will start assembling this guy. All right, so be right back. Okay, guys, let's get this assembly party started. We are obviously going to start off like we always do with the base. There we go. I still think that uh, out of the old line, Boba Fett has the most interesting base as it's like uh, two pieces. Um, out of the new line, I think Asajj Ventress's uh, base is probably the most intricate, and then uh, Maul's. Okay, so next we will grab this skull. It pegs right into this little slot here, I think. There we go. And then we'll put on the axe. And the skull here, they kind of have like a little plastic insert. It's actually not like a, I guess it's a, to help reinforce where it's supposed to go uh, rather than cracking the skull because it's quite hollow and thin. Um, so, uh, you know, it was a good, good bit of foresight from Sideshow to do something like that. All right, so there's really not much to the statue. I mean, there's a base, the axe, the skull, the body, then the heads, right? So next we're gonna put the head here. 
And man, what I didn't notice earlier is uh, because his arms are so big, he's wearing like this necklace with like a, kind of like a tusk or a tooth on there. And uh, you can see it from up top uh, and it's all sculpted in, which I like. Everything sculpted in, even the straps, his belt, um, no like plastic, like glued on pieces on there. Um, very, very happy about this piece. Now I, I totally get how this is a grill. Um, not for some people, I think for most people it is like any of these Mythos Star Wars fans. So as you peg him in, um, you have to watch out here because this uh, butt of the axe is going to sit into his hand there. So as you peg him in, you're going to watch where that goes. Peg him down. And it's sitting there and you can spin this freely, which is cool. Because you can face it that way. And you can face it this way. All right. Wow. Okay. Looking good. Looking good. I like how this overhangs the base. And, um, gives it more uh, depth, more dimension. Um, one thing I am noticing is on his arm here, there's like quite an obvious seam where they uh, glued his arm on. Um, it wasn't cast as one piece. And I'm sure it's the same with uh, this arm too. But I guess that's how they'll have to, they had to do it because this hand kind of overlaps um, his left hand. His right hand overlaps his left wrist and you can see gaps in there. It's not like a solid piece, so it gives it really that realism. It's really cool. All right, so we're going to do the regular head sculpt. And that's it right there. Perfect fit. Magnets are strong. Really cool. Um, he's kind of looking down, so you can't really see his eyes. You would have to go on an angle like this to see his eyes. But then at that point, this arm really blocks your view upward, so you really don't see his tusks or his nose. Just barely see his snout, actually. Um, but man, looking at this now, like, you can see like just the wrinkles of his skin on where his elbow is. It's amazing. He has scars on his legs. He is very battle-worn, tried, and tested. He looks phenomenal, guys. Like, if you guys are looking for this, I really wish that you find it because this thing is amazing. And if you have one, don't sell it. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work for me wishing you guys to find one and people not selling it, but I don't think I'm going to sell him. This is kind of a forever piece here. Wow. Okay, so next is we're going to do the alternate head sculpt. I really wish that this head sculpt, they did more gloss on his nose and upper lip, just like they did on the regular or, or the original head sculpt. Um, that would have looked really, really cool. Maybe I could send this out to a, to a painter and get that done, or maybe I can do it myself. But I swear that when I watched videos on YouTube before that uh, it was uh, glossy, but who knows? I will have to reference other videos and see. Uh, this head sculpt a little bit rocky on here, but the magnet is very strong. Um, I mean, it pegs in deep, so you never have to worry about it falling off. Um, and it's so heavy. Like, this, this thing has so much weight to it. It's kind of crazy. Probably one of the head, heaviest head sculpts um, I've ever handled, at least. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this head sculpt, you can really see everything. You can see his whole face. He's not like, you know, um, burying his face kind of in his arms. It's kind of up and he's kind of like screaming out. You can see that there. Wow. See a lot more of his face. It's less covered up. So you see a lot more detail. You get to see his tusks, his mouth, his tongue, his nose. You see everything. Nothing is blocked. So I think this is a really great, great pose. Um, it's phenomenal. I mean, from back here, if 
I didn't see his horns and I just covered the top of his head here and I looked at this at a distance, I would think, is that a gladiator hulk? Um, just because of his actual physique, he's huge. Um, but nope, it's Lamrock, the Executioner. Crazy. I would not mess with this guy. I think uh, even Jedi would have a tough time with him. Okay, so now I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. We're going to do some close-ups. I'm not going to be lazy today because I'm not tired like I was um, yesterday night or this morning at 3 a.m. I'm going to get the gimbal out and uh, we'll do some proper close-ups. All right, so be right back. Okay, guys, I am back. We are going to start off with the base here. Um, very normal, typical Mythos base. You know, very simple, not much to it on the sides at least. And then we move up to um, this, this kind of substrate here. Um, I guess that's inside uh, what we know as the Rancor uh, pit. Um, that's at least what I think it is. Uh, it would make sense. Because in the story, if you read it on the Certificate of Authenticity, he's kind of standing like this over top of um, his victim with the skull there. So uh, I think that's exactly where he is, is in the Rancor pit. Or right now it's a Lumrock pit. <laughs> uh, this is the skull here. Really nice detail. Uh, moving to his left foot here. Um, when you're really up this close, you can kind of see like the sculpting lines or whatever, but at a distance, it looks absolutely perfect. Uh, the toenails have some gloss to it. The sandals look great. Um, I guess the only thing to note here is that there was a little bit of paint bleed they got onto the bottom of the sandal. That's an easy fix. Uh, even the sandal straps, really great detail there on both feet. And uh, you can see more paint. Uh, can't fault them at that. This was over 10 years ago when they, when they did the statue. And I believe that it rivals all the new stuff today. Going toward the, to the axe here, very nice weathering. You see some, you know, wear cracks and whatnot on the blade. Very nice detail there. And you see his legs here. You see some like, you know, chunks of a missing, like some scars here. Um, you can just see where uh, the drier, thicker skin is here. It's more yellow versus the green moisturized type skin. Uh, you see like the tendons in there. You see his calf muscles. Oh man, like they they pulled out all the stops for, for this one. Same as this leg too. His kneecap there. And then moving up to his loincloth. <laughs> you see the belts, the D-rings, the buckles. Um, those little skull and crossbones. Um even has like a little holster here, probably for like a big knife. A little sash here. Maybe it's his cloth to wipe his hands off of all the blood. Very, very, very cool. Really nice detail here. Moving up to his uh, belly. You can see like the deep gashes and scars here. Um, on his back here is just crazy. Just crazy. I mean, the straps, more buckles, more rivets. That perfect V. He is a big, big, scary dude. Moving up to a shoulder, I guess, uh, armor. Such crazy detail there. You can see like, you know, like they made hammer marks, like it was forged, the wear marks, the spikes. 
Ah, it looks so good. And then his little like arm band here really looks like rope. It's all sculpted in. Pretty amazing to his glossy fingernails. Even the detail, the wrinkles in his hands, even like the rope that they did here that attaches his gauntlets. Um, even the sculpted fabric there. I mean, there is no detail that they missed. And then you can see here on his arm, the deep gash from battle there, another arm band there, a little bit of branding here. I don't know if Jabba did that to him. I'm not sure what that symbol is. If anybody knows, please let me know, comment below. And then let's go to the back of his head. This is the back of his head sculpt here. Really looks like leather. You can see his horns up top. And of course, the head sculpt in the front here. Amazing, that detail is actually phenomenal. Those eyes in there, the beady black eyes, and then the top of his helmet there, the detail, the horns. And then I don't know if you guys can see the, yeah, that's his necklace right there. And then you can see that it continues all the way up and it's all sculpted there. It's quite, quite detailed. It's pretty astounding. So yeah, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take off this alternate head sculpt, a little star screen, and we're gonna put on the regular Um, you can see that's it, what it looks like there. It looks a little unfinished, but this head sculpt really covers it all up. It is huge. Okay, so what I was saying is if you're going to look at it at eye level, like this, or if you want to get his eyes, you can see how much of his face is covered up. Even as I move up, it gets covered up. You'd have to be up here and look down uh, really to see all that detail on that on this head sculpt. But it is quite phenomenal as well. I really love the gloss on his nostrils and upper lip. You can see like the folds on you know on his on his face. He's he's a pig. I mean swine. So he is fat, I guess, quote unquote, but it is all muscle. Like you can see even the muscle underneath, like I guess in his belly. I mean, it's very, um, very well done. Very well done. I'm over the moon with this guy here. Oh man. Like, uh, pictures and even probably this video doesn't do this thing justice. This thing is massive. Like this is my hand here. He is huge. The thickness of him, like he is thick. All the way around. I mean, the amount of polystone that is here is just unreal. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I'm going to end the video here. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is an oldie but a goodie. Oldie but a grail. <laughs> Um, comment below what you guys think, um, which head sculpt you guys like, um, whether you guys think this is worth the aftermarket prices. I think these things are going for like two to three thousand dollars Canadian, which is insane. Um, again, not going to say what I paid for this because my wife watches these videos and she would probably kill me. Uh, but like, subscribe. I love doing these videos for you guys. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And uh, catch you guys on the next one. Bye.